Hi Kemet Queen followers, welcome to another video where we unravel the mysteries of ancient Egypt. going to go a little bit further back in time we're gonna explore the earliest signs of human activity in ancient Egypt before the great civilization that we know so well today we're gonna learn about Paleolithic Egypt or the Stone Age in Egypt the Stone Age Egyptians how did they live their lives what do we know about them how advanced were they we're going to learn and unravel all of that today Studies show that there has been human activity on the Egyptian land for up to 700,000 years ago. Today we're going to be focusing on the two earliest human burials in Egypt that we have found until this day. Let's step back 35,000 years in time to a city called Nazlet Khatir in Sohag in Egypt where a fascinating story unfolds. The story of our great, 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 great grandfather, Nazlet Khatir Human or Khatir Al-Tahtawi. Or as Egyptians call him, Am Khatir. What we know about Am Khatir is that he was alive 35,000 years ago in Nazlet Khatir province in Suhaid. He was living in arguably one of the most important areas of that period, the site of the earliest known underground mining complex in the world. Am Khatir was a very hard-working young man, as evidenced by the strong muscular insertions on his postcranial remains, or in other words, his backbone. Scientists found that his body was adapted to high biomechanical strength. He had a muscular body from his work in the mine. Am Khatir and the other men that worked in the mine would dig holes in the ground that would go down up to two meters deep underground and then from there they would make these holes wider so they can create underground tunnels or chambers some of them as wide as 10 meters squared to dig these holes they used animal horns like those of deer or oxen from these underground tunnels they would extract stones and gravel that was used to make the tools that they needed in their everyday life, like their blades and axes. One day while working in the mine, he fell and died due to exhaustion. Studies show that he was about 25 years old at the time of his death. He was buried in a rocky hill near the mine with his axe next to his head. This marks the first burial gift in Egyptian history. His skeleton was found in 1980 by a Belgian explorer and it was taken to Belgium. Finally, in 2004, after countless letters from Egyptian archaeologists, he was returned back home along with his ex. This completed the journey of Khatir al-Tahtawi from his ancient past to the present day. He lies now in the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization in Fustat, Cairo. His skeleton is the oldest, almost complete human skeleton found in North Africa. What an inspiring story, right? This man died while he was working in the mine, trying to make the tools for him and probably for his family that they would need to hunt animals for food or to protect themselves from dangerous animals. Now let's travel much more further back in time to 70,000 years ago in Tel Al Taramsa area in the Qina province of Egypt where we find partial skeleton of an Egyptian child. 
The skeleton of this child was found near Dendera Temple, which was built by the ancient Egyptians around 60,000 years later. These remains date back to Middle Stone Age and are considered one of the oldest tombs discovered in Egypt and one of the earliest burial sites of modern humans or Homo sapiens in Africa. The child was buried at a depth of one meter. He was laid on his back with his head resting on a sand pillow. One of his hands was extended behind his back and the other was carefully placed behind the pelvic area. His head faced east where the sun rises as if 70,000 years Years ago, the ancient ancestors of the Egyptians were contemplating resurrecting this child just as the sun rises from the east. And we have reason to believe that these ideas became rooted and they marked the beginning of a belief in the afterlife for ancient Egyptians. Fascinating, right? According to the research team, the child's age was between 8 and 10 years old. Unfortunately, we don't know how he died, but researchers were able to create a little story from the little evidence that they have. Near his tomb, researchers found a pit full of flintstones. This pit is believed to have been used for training children in their craftsmanship. For example, how to make tools from stones or how to extract these stones from the ground. At the end of each day, all the stones that were used during the training were thrown back into the pit. This repetitive process of professional training and passing on skills in flint tool making occurred every day during the distant era 70,000 years ago. This evidence suggests that the children of Tal al-Taramsa in Egypt who lived 70,000 years ago were being taught the skills of flint tool manufacturing seasonally in what could be termed as the earliest known form of education and the oldest form of vocational training schools to transfer skills to the new generations of that era. Tal al-Taramsa child belonged to the Old Stone Age or the Ancient Stone Age. It's possible that he might have died due to an accident while he was having his training. Maybe something like cutting himself or falling over. And then obviously he was immediately buried near the place of his death. So the child of Tal al-Taramsa is the oldest known human remains found in Egypt so far. This is all we know of these ancient Stone Age humans that lived on Egyptian land. These prehistoric Egyptians were always considered primitive, but new research and studies suggest that they may have been more advanced than we have previously thought before. These pre-dynastic tribes that lived in northern and southern Egypt left artifacts behind. Some were complex and some were simple, like these clay pots for example, which began to develop works of art on the outside that depict these humans' daily lives. As these people started to settle on the Nile banks, they began to form communities known as pre-dynastic settlements. We can really see evidence of the village life in their artifacts from that time. For example, these pots were found. They were used to bake bread. But they were found in very large numbers by hundreds, which means they had bakeries that served these communities or villages. Archaeologists also found pots used in fermenting barley to make beer or wines. This can be seen as a sign of entertainment maybe even some sort of a nightlife. There are also evidences of a very simple writing system, as you can see here. These are labels that were used on pots, for example. But what's stranger than all of this is these drawings of huge boats, suggesting that these people weren't as primitive as we once thought. These boat drawings resemble the solar barks that will appear 12,000 years later near the time the pyramids were built. These drawings mark the beginning of the ancient Egyptian civilization about 19,000 years ago. Now you tell me, what do you think of these 
ultra ancient Egyptians. Do you think they were advanced? In some of these pictures and videos that I showed, they did have a lot of symbols that they used frequently to express themselves. Do you think that they had already developed a writing system? Do you think that there was a civilization before the one that we know of with societies and advanced systems that we might not have known about? Now I know some of you are going to be waiting to find out the ethnicity of these ancient, ancient people because a lot of people are very concerned with the race of ancient Egyptians. How long have we looked the way that we look today? And if there was another race before us that was different from us. And of course, as with every video, I love I love to have a small little special part where I debunk all the haters and their theories. So, haters are gonna say that this human, Nazlit Khatir human or Tal Taramsa child, were of a different ethnicity than the Egyptians that we see today. While of course it's very difficult to tell exactly how this human looked like from only their, their skeleton and their remains, research can compare it to other remains or skeletons that were found around the area from that specific period. Let's focus on the more complete skeleton, which is Nazlet Khater skeleton. Researchers were very surprised to find that the Nazlet Khater skeleton had a lot of similarities with both sub-Saharan African skeletons that were found from that same period and Southern European skeletons. Researchers compared Nazlet Khater skeleton with recent human samples in an attempt to deal with past and present Homo sapiens diversity. It was compared with samples from North Africa, Europe and East and West Africa. Its cranial dimensions show stronger affinities with Eurasian Upper Paleolithic specimens rather than with geographically close recent populations. The similarities between the NK2 labyrinth and the European Upper Paleolithic sample suggested by the discriminant analysis may support a close relationship between this North African specimen and the European one. On the other hand, when they looked at the mandible, Ron Pinhasi and Patrick Simal found strong Stone Age Sub-Saharan affinity. The results indicate a strong association between some of the Sub-Saharan Middle Stone Age specimens and the Nazlet Khater mandible, which are different from the modern Sub-Saharan Africans. When examining the inner ear patterns, the shape and proportion characteristics are similar to the pattern previously described for European Upper Paleolithic modern humans. The similarities between Nazlet Khater specimen and Upper Paleolithic European samples may indicate a close relationship between this Nile Valley specimen and European Upper Paleolithic modern humans. Which made researchers wonder, were the Egyptians from the time already mingling with other civilizations that were close by? How did they get characteristics from both Sub-Saharan Africa and Southern Europe? Well, the answer is very clear and very simple. The Nazlet Khater humanoid is very similar to the Egyptians today. We have characteristics that are both similar to Sub-Saharan Africans and to th Southern Europeans and Eurasians. And this shows and proves that even if we were a mixed race that started out as Sub-Saharan, we had already mixed and became this race that we are today more than 35,000 years ago. Which proves my point. We are the ancient Egyptians, we are the Stone Age Egyptians, we are the builders of the pyramids, it was always us and there was nobody else. And if there was somebody else, they were there so, so, so long ago that it makes it insignificant because the builders of this whole civilization were already like us. <laughs> In the middle, between Sub-Saharan African and southern european so thank you so much for watching my video today i hope that you enjoyed this video and i hope you learned something new as with all my videos thank you for coming back to my channel if you are a subscriber already and if you're not a subscriber you need to subscribe 
okay so there's a lot of new content that's coming out i'm sorry that i've been away for so long you guys know me i can be i mean i don't know if you know me or not but i'm telling you now i'm the type of person that goes through periods where i'm very motivated to do a lot of things and i can do like a thousand things a day and um and this goes for work and youtube and whatever in my life and then i go through other periods where i'm i don't feel like doing anything like i don't want to do anything you know what i mean i don't know if that's a mental health issue or where i'd have to check that stuff out or like i didn't want to do anything i'm done with that phase already i'm back okay so now you're gonna see a lot more of me and let's pray and hope that this phase of motivation uh is gonna continue for longer this time <laughs> so anyways uh thank you so much for always supporting me for always showing me love in the comments and for the people that are hating i don't even see you i don't care about you die no i'm sorry don't die still i care about you as a human being so just don't die but at the same time like die metaphorically you know what i mean anyways so coming up i'm going to be making a whole series on egyptian mythology i'm going to be bringing very valuable guests on the chemic queen show to talk to you guys and to teach you guys about history and ancient egypt i'm going to be doing a lot of travel videos as well so stay tuned and stay tuned put the notification bell thing on so that you can be the first to watch my videos and um that's it thank you so much and i will see you next time bye